Wake up. Everybody wake up. Wake up. Everybody wake up. It is early in the morning and we're gonna look at some Met Gala looks because there's no other way that I'd rather start my morning. And I truly had one of the best days I've had in weeks yesterday, minus the weekends because the weekends are always good days because it was the first Monday in May. And if you know, you know, because that means the Met Gala. And the Met Gala truly is my Super Bowl. Like girls love to say that, but like, I really mean it. The thing that people don't understand about the Met Gala, for me, the way that I truly want to watch the Met Gala is in like a quad box. You may know like when you watch sports or if, you know, during a busy football season, my boyfriend will watch four different games on the TV via the quad box feature on YouTube TV. That is what I want. I want an angle from here, an angle from here, an angle from here, an angle from here. This person interviewing this person, this person interviewing this person. We get like one live stream from Vogue, which it's good, but like I want to be everywhere all at once. You know what I mean? Like I want a view from the top of the stairs, a view from the bottom of the stairs, a view from the hallway, just like a live stream, you know? And you know, we do have interviews. Emma Chamberlain does a good job. She has fun interviews. Lala Anthony has literally the best interviewing skills. Give that woman a daytime television show. Put her on every single red carpet. Why is Lala Anthony not everywhere all the time? Like she is so good at what she does and she's so calming to talk to all the celebrities. I think everyone enjoys talking to her as well. Like she's just so good at what she does. And that doesn't get talked about enough. Yeah, so in the future, moving forward, Vogue, if you're listening, I want about a quad box feature, maybe even eight different views, okay? That's what I want. This doesn't get covered well enough. I was watching the E! News coverage as well and I turned it off because like, it's just not good. It's not. They cut away too much to go talk in studio. I do appreciate them going into the looks, but like, can we do that after the fact more? Cause like, I would rather keep my eyes on the stairs, on the steps. That's how I feel about the live coverage. Let's get into the looks and stuff, shall we? I'm gonna try not to ramble on as much because like, I'm gonna end up saying the same like three adjectives. This year, the theme was Sleeping Beauty's reawakening fashion. There was the Garden of Time dress code. There was a poem that went along with it, which I'm not going to read it right now, but if you want it, just Google it. So it kind of gave a reference to people, kind of a little bit of an inspo for how to dress for the red carpet, red carpet, green carpet, call it what you want. So the overall theme, of all the looks from what I've gathered. A lot of florals, garden references, a lot of maybe flowers sprouting in the springtime or maybe the decaying of something. We've got the duality of it all, okay? So let's jump in. There are always co-chairs that walk the runway first. Zendaya was a co-chair this year. She's probably one of the most highly anticipated people just because of her place in the fashion world. Like she kills it in every single aspect all the time. Every single press tour she does, it's just revolutionary. <laughs> Pat Bunny was also a co-chair. Jennifer Lopez, Chris Hemsworth, which is interesting. I don't have much to say about them, but I do want to talk first about Zendaya's look. So Zendaya was wearing Margiela. The way that if this girl wasn't gonna be an actor, she would have been a highly successful model. Like she is made to model. She is so good at what she does. I don't have much to say about this because I'm at a loss for words. It's giving drama. It's giving attitude. I just wanna put a pause on this. The thing is when I talk about art, I think when anyone talks about art, you know, something that's subjective. I'm gonna sound like an idiot. I'm gonna sound stupid because I wanna say stupid things, okay? So what I really wanna say about this is to me, she looks like, like a daring creature that's like crawled out from the forest, kind of like a little snake or <laughs> lizard. Love it, it's kind of giving like Adam and Eve. It's kind of like she was a little bit of an evil creature hidden in the forest. That's how I feel when I look at this. Anyways, the way she was posing, amazing. But this woman in the museum, honestly, she was giving, so. Anyways, next one. I wanna talk about Ao Adibri. I don't know if I said her name correctly, but I did love this dress. This is by Loewe. The way that this blends from the white all the way to the colors is gorgeous. The pastel flowers here, it's gorgeous. It's like she's emerging from the beautiful meadow forest floor. It was also giving a little bit of side boob, which all right. Also, okay toned arm, 
I love her. She seems like so much fun. She seems like a nice person. And the back of the dress too, it like drapes over in the back. I love a style like this. Next, I want to talk about Kendall Jenner because you can't not talk about Kendall Jenner. This look is vintage Givenchy. This look had never been worn by a person before her. It could not be tailored. It could not be altered at all. She just simply had to fit into it. In the interview, she was like, I just feel so lucky to be in this. And I'm like, it must be so nice to be so beautiful and skinny and well-connected and gorgeous and to fit into this dress. And she looked awesome in it. It looked so cool. The draping, especially in the back, it comes down in a V over her butt crack. First impressions, I was like, she kind of looks like a Star Wars character. A little bit. It's so cool. And then her after party look too was glamorous and gorgeous, like a little angel. Maybe I'll insert that in here too. I think she has some of the best looks every year. So I always look forward to seeing what she has to wear. Next, let's talk about Emma Chamberlain. This girl is a seasoned veteran by now. It is so crazy how well adapted and brought into the world of fashion and the Met and Vogue. She is there now, like she is in it. Like no one even bats their eye that Emma Chamberlain's at the Met Gala now. And she started out on YouTube. Homegirl is a fashion girly. I'm obsessed with this look. When I first saw it, I was like, I think she, honestly, she might have one of the best dresses. Like it's on theme, it's drama. The way that this dress just looks like vines and forest floor and everything just draped across her. Like it looks like she is one with the forest floor in the best way possible. Plus her microphone that she was interviewing everyone on had a little like vine branch thing coming up the side of it. It truly looks like, like a tree trunk and vines and moss and stuff are wrapping around her and making her one with the earth. It looks so amazing. Kind of has like a cape kind of action to it. Obsessed with this makeup. I think she's kind of found this makeup that it works really well on her. Whenever I was watching this, my boyfriend was watching it with me and he goes, she always kind of looks like a vampire. And I was like, yeah, she's got Tim Burton face. Like it works well for her. It's just like a part of her. It just really suits her so well. I do want to talk about Tyla. She was wearing Balmain. They were saying that it's made out of sand or it's like replicate sand. It's supposed to emulate that. This was so well molded to her that she could not move. There's a video going around of like the men that were helping her around the stairs, literally lifting her up the stairs. This girl looks so tiny. They literally just picked her up and placed her on the next part. It's so well formed to her body. It does look like she just came out of the sand. I feel like I keep saying that. They just came out of the earth. It truly looks like clay just kind of like molded to her. Gigi and Tom Brown. This was so cool. I feel like we've seen this silhouette with his like skirts with it being a jacket that kind of blooms out to a dress. The little hand beaded flowers on everything were so cool. I love Gigi's hair though. That's what I want to talk about the most. Like I truly want to cut my hair like that right now. Yes, I'm making this about me and I want that but I want to be able to look like Gigi with that short hair because it's awesome but I've had short hair and I do not think it looked like that anyways I did love this look it was cool I want to speak on this for just one second because I love everything that's going on here but I don't like the face shield thing which I know was intentional but this with a different neckline of sorts I would wear that down the aisle to get married that's the wedding dress naked in front of my whole family it's fashion okay Elle Fanning and Balmain I was obsessed with this look when I first saw it because it looked like she was just coming out of the ocean like the wet look her skin was glass skin as well and she said the birds were kind of a reference to her playing sleeping beauty the birds i wish they were incorporated in a different way overall i love this this fit this silhouette it's it's gorgeous and it looks really great on her dua lipa look gorgeous as always she looks like a crazy little creature the lace is stunning the little like boa feathers piece this looks like pretty rock and roll of Dua Lipa honestly to me maybe it's the red hair and the black like outfit and the lace but she looks kind of rock and roll here the jewels insane look at this giant diamond she just has on her pinky I'm kind of wondering what's going on as far as like pants situation like is she just wearing nude underwear I don't know this is really this is really cool do I think it's the most on theme no but like whatever it's like borderline whereas there are some people that just like wore plain dresses that I'm like, how does this relate? I have to talk about Kim Kardashian and I'm just gonna touch on this for one second. This is cool. And I guess the internet is like absolutely divided by this cardigan sweater situation she's got going on. I haven't heard her talk about it. Like I'd have no recollection of what her reasoning for this would be, but I hate it. Why? I don't understand that, which is probably why she did it because it's different. But I do love this dress. I love the flowers, extreme waistline that she can do. Like it is insane. Like waist that big? ask this big. 
how? First thing I thought when I saw her holding this like sweater is I'm like, maybe there was a wardrobe malfunction and that's why they did this. I could see that being the story, but like besides that, I have no clue why. But like, I feel like we would have heard if that was the problem. By all means, this dress, gorgeous. I think it would have looked stunning with her just like posing, you know, with just the dress and the waistline. I also like wish she would do some like different poses. She knows what works for her, I guess. That's just my opinion. I can't believe Angel Reese was there. Barry Keoghan, the internet was memeing that he looked like Willy Wonka. My initial thought was that he just came off a boat to the colonies. My boyfriend said he looked like a pirate. Cardi B had that giant ass skirt. It was cool. But a bigger skirt does not mean you have the coolest look. Rihanna did do that and it was the coolest look. This is insane. That's a lot of material. That's a lot of tool. At the very end of everything, like after the live stream had cut off, Zendaya wore a second look on the red carpet, as she should. Headpiece is really amazing with the flowers. I wonder if Tom Holland was there. I know that's so annoying, but like, I wonder if Tom Holland was there. Overall, fun night. I just love people watching. I think that's what it boils down to. I love people watching. It's just interesting to see how everyone interacts on the red carpet and poses. I love the fashion of it all. It's overall a fun night. Not the best Met that I've ever seen. If I had to rate it out of five stars, I'd give it three stars. Barely though. It was still fun. I need better coverage of this though, okay? I want to be fully entertained. We need more lead up to this. Is this too niche? I don't know, I just want more. Because the actual event comes and it's like two or three hours long, maybe two hours and that's it. Do we think one day this could be something that's televised, like the Oscars or something? I don't know, I think that would ruin the Met. I think that would ruin it. It wouldn't be as cool anymore. It'd be too commercial. This is still like such a fun event because it's so many of your favorite people, celebrities, so close in proximity. Honorable mention goes to Taylor Russell because like she just seems like sweetest human alive and she's so gorgeous and precious. Also Charlie XCX, I really did like her look. Ariana Grande looked like a princess. Who else? Camila Cabello, like it really looked like she picked out her dress like last minute. They have close-ups of her posing. I was like, damn it, her boob tape is out. Like that sucks. I don't have anything else to say and I don't have any other looks to talk about, so. Take that as you will. I talked about the ones I want to talk about. We didn't see any Rihanna. No Rihanna this year. She was at the F1 Miami Grand Prix like this last weekend. So maybe opted for that rather than the Met. No Rihanna, no Beyonce, no Taylor Swift yet again. Maybe someday. No Harry Styles. It was still a good night. It was like kind of tame. Anyways, that's it for the Met Gala 2024. Best dressed, most exciting looks, my favorites. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at hlander underscore. And thanks for watching. Comment your favorite look from the night. I'd love to hear it. Okay, I'll see you guys next time. Love ya. Bye.